Right, this is a video by request. One of uh, the viewers of my last video where I did a circuit walkthrough of the MFJ Cub uh, QRP transceiver asked if I wouldn't mind doing a circuit walkthrough of a Heathkit HW9. Unfortunately I don't have an HW9 so I don't have any hardware to show you but I did go online and grab the schematic so we'll, uh, we'll take a walk through the schematic. Uh, it looks like it's pretty involved but it's actually not that difficult when we uh, kind of break it down and take a look at it. And it's helpful to kind of start at uh, kind of the block diagram level first so we can kind of see the paths we're kind of going to go through. So we've got uh, kind of the tra common transmit and receive paths down here, the receiver up here, and some of the frequency generation circuitry. So we'll just take a walk through here real quick. So here's the antenna. Uh, next to coming in from the antenna we have a set of switched low pass filters that are primarily used uh, to clean up the transmitter, but essentially provide a little bit of pre-selection on the receive side. Okay. Uh, then there's some transmit receive uh, switching to transmit to change between the receive path going in this direction and the transmit path going through the PA in that direction. And then ahead of that is a set of switched uh, bandpass filters. There, there's eight of them, one for each of the bands that this transceiver will operate on. These are tuned bandpass filters. And from there we come into uh, what's called the second mixer. Uh, so the mixer takes uh, the input from a premix signal here that we'll get into in a moment. On the receive side, the, uh, the result of mixing the premix signal and our receive signal creates an IF. Okay, that IF is at 8.83 megahertz. That goes through some more switching. Okay, these are all electronic switching, by the way. And that goes in through an IF amplifier, uh, an IF bandpass filter, and then a variable gain amplifier, and another IF filter with some AGC, automatic gain control around there, to prevent overload during strong signals. That IF signal then goes into another mixer. This one is used as a product detector. So it's taking the 8.83 MHz IF and the BFO, which is just a little bit above 8.83 MHz. And then the product of those, one of the components of that, is at 700 Hz nominally. Okay, that's our audio tone. That comes out and, and goes to the inputs of uh, two active filters, a wide filter and a narrower filter. And there's a switch to select which one you want to use. And the output of that goes through the audio amp uh, to the speaker. Uh, that's really kind of the receive path. Uh, in transmit mode, there's a transmit side tone oscillator that gets turned on, and that gets fed through the speaker, so that's how you can hear that. Um, and then the rest, of the rest of the transmit path is actually quite simple down here. We already can see you know, our uh, transmit pr uh, amplifier and the low-pass filter. Uh, we also see the bandpass filtering here. That is going to be used to filter the output of this mixer. So, so in transmit mode, the mixer uh, will take two input signals. One is this premix uh, oscillator here, and the other will be from the BFO. So the mixing product from the 8.83 or approximately 8.83 megahertz BFO and this premix signal will create the transmit frequency to go back out. And of course the, uh, the bandpass filters will select the appropriate mixing product to, to transmit out. So the frequency generation here is done with a couple of different uh, oscillators. We've already me already mentioned uh, the beat frequency oscillator, the BFO. Okay, and that's nominally 8.83 megahertz. It's actually just a little bit above that. It actually does get shifted slightly um, by 700 hertz between transmit and receive. And then uh, then here's your VFO. This is your variable frequency oscillator that's connected to the main tuning knob, and it has basically 250 kilohertz of tuning range. So what we're doing is taking that oscillator, which is between 5.75 and 6 megahertz approximately, and that gets mixed with the output of one of eight uh, heterodyne frequency oscillators, or HFOs. And basically these are, uh, this is a crystal oscillator, okay, so they're kind of eight fixed frequency crystal oscillators. Again, the band switch uh, will determine which one of these is being used. Okay, that gets mixed with the VFO. So the VFO gives us 250 kilohertz of tuning range, okay, and this gives us essentially our what we're going to be mixing that against to create our premix signal here, which when it gets mixed with the BFO creates our transmit frequency, okay. 
So that's kind of the architecture of uh, the HW9. So let's take a walk through this at the schematic level and see what we've got. So starting off with, let's talk about the keying circuit. Okay, the keying circuit does a couple of things. So our key connects right here. Okay, and then uh, so one of the places that goes into is this circuit here, which is just a couple of transistors that get turned uh, turned on when we ground the key, and this basically creates a signal that is used to mute the uh, receive audio. That mute signal uh, comes up into a transistor here, which essentially shuts down the output from the uh, filters, okay, so that the receive signal doesn't go through the audio amplifier. And there's an adjustable delay that you can, can play with here as part of the alignment of the receiver, okay, to adjust the delay of how long it takes the receiver to come back on after you let go of the key. So that's uh, one portion of the keying circuit. The other portion of the keying circuit is this set of transistors here. And uh, so these three transistors uh, are used to create essentially uh, two uh, switching signals. One is called T12, and that basically is a 12 volt signal, a 12 volt power supply, if you will, that comes on when you key the transmitter. So we call it T12, or I'll just kind of have it labeled as TX. So it comes on when you have a, when you, you're doing a transmission. And then the other one turns on, creates a 12 volt signal that's called R12. Okay, and that one is basically a 12 volt uh, supply that goes on in receive mode. So these transistors essentially create that in both transmit and receive mode. These two signals are used throughout the rest of the circuitry to either power up you know, portions of the circuit uh, during transmit and receive, and also to, uh, to bias on switching diodes for, to route si the signal path in one direction or another in transmit and receive. So as we go through the walkthrough, you'll see notations for TX and RX, and they basically refer to these two signals. So let's start at the antenna and work our way through the receiver first. Okay, so the antenna connection is right here. It comes in, and what we see, this, this circuit here is actually a relative power uh, reading circuit, a simple you know, diode detector to essentially give us a signal during transmit that will deflect the meter at, for a relative power output reading. So we can... Kind of, that, that's really only there for transmit. So the received signal comes into this uh, kind of block right here, which is a set of switched low-pass filters, okay, that are used mainly to clean up the transmitter, okay, uh, to get rid of any high high harmonic content out of the transmitter. But they also provide a little bit of uh, you know high-end or high-side pre-selection for the receiver. So the, the position of the band switch will determine which one of these low-pass filters we're going through. And then we come out of, the, out of that switch assembly. Up here is the transmit path we'll go through in a little bit, but that's essentially off during receive mode, so we'll just kind of ignore it. The signal gets coupled down through here, and there's an impedance matching transformer. During receive mode, the, these series diodes are all turned on, so essentially they present a low impedance so that our receive signal Go couple through this impedance matching transformer and continue on its way. Okay, in transmit mode, these diodes would be turned off and the receiver path would be blocked. Okay, but in receive mode, we have the RF receive signal comes down this line here, and then up to this point. At this point, during receive mode, this diode is turned off so that the, no signal essentially goes that way, and we couple the signal into this portion of the band switch. This portion of the band switch selects one of eight uh, bandpass filters. These are tuned bandpass filters. Okay, so uh, first part of our band selection is done here. Okay, certainly more so than the low-pass filters, uh, at least for the receive side. So a receive signal after going through the selected bandpass filter comes out here through another impedance matching transformer up to this mixer. Okay, this mixer. If we look back at this block diagram is this one here. Okay, so during receive mode, the mixer is taking input from our premix uh, oscillator uh, and the RF signal itself, and that creates the IF. So let's go back and look at that here. So this is our, our mixer here. It's just a, uh, you know, a double balance mixer. So we have our RF signal coming in here. Okay, and then we're also taking uh, 
signal input on this side here, this is essentially coming from our premix oscillator. We're going to go in and talk about that uh, after we finish walking through the receive path. So that premix oscillator signal and our RF signal are mixed together and create an, an IF signal at 8.83 megahertz. That comes out here. Now in uh, transmit mode, this diode is turned off, so the signal does not go that way. Uh, excuse me, in receive mode, that uh, diode's turned off. These two diodes are turned on, so that presents a low impedance path this way. So our IF signal comes through here and then up this direction to another uh, IF matching transformer. It basically performs uh, essentially the first part of uh, the IF filtering. And an IF amplifier right here, okay, through another uh, uh, IF filter here. Okay, so our first of our IF gain and IF uh, filtering are, is done here. Then this uh, this guy right here is a, an MC1349. He's a variable gain IF amplifier. So his so it basically this is an IF gain stage, another matching transformer, you know, and filtering stage here. Uh, that IF signal is also fed back down to the set of detectors here, and then amplified up to create essentially our AGC signal. So this is essentially measuring, this circuit here is measuring the level of the signal that's in the IF. And if it gets too large, it basically applies a control voltage to the amplifier to turn the gain down. So that's our automatic gain control. Okay. So also the signal that's also used to control that gain is also fed down into this circuit here, buffered by this FET and turned into a signal that drives the received signal strength meter. So that's our, our, where our signal strength meter uh, gets its signal from. It really is just reading the level of the control voltage in the automatic gain control. So continuing on, we go through this uh, IF transformer and uh, couple ourselves now into uh, this guy, which is an MC1496. This is a product detector. Okay, so this product detector is essentially the demodulator for CW. Okay, so it's taking the 8.83 megahertz IF input and is also taking input from this path here, which is coming from the BFO. So that's you know nominally our 8.83 megahertz. It's actually about 700 hertz high. So that now the when we mix those together, one of the components that we get out of this is a 700 hertz or nominally 700 hertz tone when we're tuned to a signal. Okay, that goes through a simple little filter here and then is applied to the inputs of two audio filters. This is kind of a wide audio filter, a simple you know, active stage uh, through here. Uh, and then there's also a dual stage active filter. So this is kind of our narrow filter. Those two outputs uh, come up and then are fed into a switch that's on the front panel to switch between narrow or wide. Okay. Uh, actually, the narrow or wide switch is right here, okay? And then that signal then comes into uh, our audio amplifier. There's our mute transistor right here that we talked about earlier, but then uh, this is our uh, audio amplifier, and that drives to the speaker, okay? So that's essentially the receive path. Um, there's also a, uh, a transmit side tone oscillator that couples into that uh, audio amplifier as well. So that's essentially a receive path. Okay, walking our way all the way around uh, the circuit through the second mixer. So the only thing we really didn't talk about yet was this premix signal and how the frequency generation is done in this in this transceiver. So again, there, we mentioned in the block diagram that there are a couple of different oscillators involved. There's a BFO, which really is in, is used in the product detector and the receiver that we mentioned already, not really used anywhere else. In the transmit side, it's used as one of the signals that we mix together with this premix uh, oscillator signal. And that premix signal comes from one of eight crystal oscillators mixed with the VFO. Okay, And I'll show you kind of where all that is and run through the example. So let's start down here. This is the BFO down here. Okay, uh, there's a, uh, so there's an 8.83 megahertz crystal. Okay, this is essentially our oscillator transistor here. You see there's a line that comes in here for transmit because that will slightly modify the frequency of the BFO in transmit mode. Uh, there's a buffer here. That buffer will buffer the output, amplify and buffer the output from uh, the, oscillate, the BFO and come out here. At this point, this is the signal that goes up to the BFO input to the product detector that we kind of looked at over here. Okay, And then in transmit mode, that signal gets buffered, uh, buffered again 
okay and uh, and then that essentially becomes our signal that goes into the mixer for transmit mode right in through here okay and see that's coming up this way okay so that's one of the signals that we use in the mixer in the transmit path okay so uh, the other signal comes from a combination of the VFO and these switched uh, HFOs so let's talk about the VFO first so the VFO there's our main tuning cap uh, way over here let's see if I can get the camera to focus in there Okay, so there's our main tuning uh, cap that's basically connected to the front panel VFO control. Okay, so this uh, this, uh, this FET here is basically set up as a, Hart a Hartley oscillator. Again, about 250 kilohertz or so of tuning range. Okay, and um, and then that gets buffered uh, with this uh, buffer here, and then uh, buffered again through this guy, which is really kind of a a, a tuned. Uh, filter slash amplifier, okay, to kind of bandpass filter around this frequency range. Again, it's close to 6 megahertz to about 5.75 as our tuning range, okay. And, um, and that's what we have essentially at this test point here that goes into our first mixer, okay. Now let's get back to that in a second. Also down here, there's these two transistors here. One that we can see is turned on for transmit, one that's turned on for receive, okay. And these two things will essentially adjust the bias slightly on this diode which uh, basically changes the, the oscillation frequency slightly for transmit and receive and this allows us to have an RIT control, a receive incremental tuning control so that we can have a slightly different VFO frequency uh, for receive than we do for transmit and that's essentially what an RIT is. Okay. So that's how that gets implemented. So in transmit mode, we put a constant bias across that so nothing changes. The RIT has no effect. And in the receive mode, um, we allow you to adjust the bias on that diode, uh, which is basically us being used as a reactor to slightly alter the frequency of the VFO. So that's what the rest of that is. So we've gotten the, our VFO going into our first mixer, which is just a dual gate FET. The other input to this mixer okay is coming from one of these guys now this whole stack of stuff here if you look at it, it's a bunch of identical circuits the only difference is uh, the frequency that's used so say for this guy here this is the 80 meter band switch position in the 80 meter band switch position these components this 18.33 megahertz crystal and these other two components are essentially connected up to one of these two uh, transistors. Um, there's basically two transistors that are used for the oscillators. This one's used for uh, uh, 80, 40, 30, and 20 meters. This one's used for 17, 15, 20, and 10. Okay, it's just a, I guess, uh, I don't know how the layout is, but they probably did this because these components start getting far away from each other, and you wanted these the transistors fairly closely coupled to uh, their respective components for the, uh, uh, the oscillators. So, uh, when you select the band switch position, the you know basically power is applied to turn on the diodes in that particular tuned circuit to connect it up to the transistor to make that crystal oscillator. It gets buffered by this little amplifier right here, just a simple emitter follower, and then he comes down as the other input to the first mixer. The output of that first mixer then uh, comes up and then goes into this whole bank of filters here. Now these are all bandpass filters and these are called premix filters and what they do is they take the output of this mixer which will contain you know a bunch of different mixing products and it selects the appropriate mixing product okay to be sent out through this buffer transistor okay and this buffer then sends that signal back out and around and he comes down and becomes the other input to the mixer for generating the signal. So let's take a look at an example of the frequency generation. Now remember we said that the uh, let's look, look at the 80 meter uh, com, uh, you know, kind of example here. So for 80 meters the HFO that's used or the, the heterodyne frequency oscillator that's used is 18.33 megahertz. So that 18.33 megahertz signal is mixed with this signal that's between basically 5.75 and 6 meg. Let's kind of pick 6 megahertz as kind of one end of the tuning range. So, um, so we ha if we have 18.33 megahertz coming in and 6 megahertz coming in, one of the mixing products is the difference of those two, which would be 12.33 megahertz. So that 12.33 megahertz signal comes out, 
and goes over here and then gets mixed with our BFO, which is 8.83, and the difference between 12.33 and 8.83 is 3.5 megahertz. That's the bottom of the 75 meter phone uh, CW band. So that's how we create a 3.5 megahertz transmit frequency. So now that we've got that 3.5 megahertz signal generated here out of this mixer, that guy comes down through a matching transformer through the appropriate bandpass filter. And we, the, these are important now because, again, this mixer is not only going to have, you know, that the difference between the the 12 meg and 8 meg, you know, oscillator and uh, BFO, but it's also going to have you know some and different frequencies and harmonics and things like that. So the bandpass filter select the appropriate. Um, mixing component which happens to be the difference between the two frequencies so we we're selecting essentially in this case our three and a half megahertz signal and that comes into here now at this point in transmit mode this diode is turned on the other ones that we talked about in the receive path are off so our transmit signal three and a half <clears throat> megahertz signal goes through this diode and uh, is then also uh, basically sent up and amplified. There's a couple of different transistors here that basically perform the RF amplifier. Uh, so we're just uh, a simple emitter follower here, okay? Another emitter follower to buffer into uh, the final final gain stages, which is this tuned amplifier here, or RF amplifier into um, a transformer, impedance matching transformer to drive a, essentially a parallel set of transistors, which are our finals, okay? And then the output of that Gets th goes through our low-pass filter to clean it up, and then out the antenna. So that's kind of the uh, the walkthrough, uh, you know, real quick walkthrough of the schematic for an HW9 uh, QRP CW transceiver. There's a lot of love the little details in here about uh, how the transmit and receive uh, signals will adjust uh, some other local oscillator signals and things like that, but. Uh, you get the idea of how this uh, transceiver is put together and the basic block diagram and uh, what the schematic components do and how they're arranged uh, for this uh, device. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, kind of a stream of consciousness, 20 minutes of uh, talking about the schematic here. So I hope uh, you're able to follow it and, uh, and got something out of it. Thanks again for watching.